Okay, if you've been watching the videos in order, this is the last market structure that we'll be going through for uh, the entire chapter 4. Okay, and today we'll be talking about monopolistic competition. Now, looking at the spectrum of market structures, the monopoly is on the rightmost extreme end, and we know that the monopoly is the most imperfect uh, market that you can find of all the market structures. And on the other extreme end, you have got perfect competition, which is your most efficient, the most desirable market um, for society, right? And in the middle, you're going to have two different types of market structures. Near the monopoly, you're going to have the oligopoly, where there is, to a certain extent, quite a bit of imperfection. And nearer to perfect competition, you're going to have monopolistic comp. So the characteristics of um, the monopolistic comp is pretty much the same as perfect competition, except for a few distinct differences. So to find out what these differences are, let's look at um, the concept of monopolistic competition and we're going to again check out what are the market structure determinants for monopolistic comp. Now the first thing is that there's going to be many many sellers in a market where there are many buyers and when I say many sellers, um, this uh, the number of sellers here is actually lesser than the sellers that you have in a perfectly competitive market. So that's one of the differences. And in a monopolistic comp market, um, the buyers as well as the sellers are going to have imperfect information and mobility about um, the prices and the cost structures of the other firms. So they don't know everything, right? And you can, you can also be a um, heterogeneous or what we call a differentiated good. Okay, and the last one is there are going to be few barriers to entry into a monopolistic competitive market. So let's look at the implications of these uh, market structure determinants. So when there are few barriers to entry, you know that in the long run, none of the firms can be making any positive profits, just like perfect competition, right? Um, the initial equilibrium should also show that they are making zero profits. And the fact that there is a differentiated good, this means that the firms can actually increase the price without losing all of their customers. So um, this is also due to the fact that there is imperfect information and mobility, which gives the firms some kind of a control over the price. And when they got control over the price, what you will have is a downward sloping demand curve that each firm inside the monopolistic comp is facing. So as you can see, this is going to be something similar to combining um, perfect competition and monopoly together. So now let's talk about marginal revenue. Um, if you have watched the previous videos before, you will know that the marginal revenue can be calculated with this formula. P multiplied by bracket 1 minus 1 over the price elasticity of demand. For short, let's just call that PED. You will need to understand this formula because we're going to be talking about something that is going to be in relation to that. And that is market power. So how do we actually see whether a firm has got market power? We actually compare the price that it charges and the marginal cost that it is incurring for producing a certain amount of that, of that good in question. So if the difference between the price and the marginal cost is actually very high, okay, this means that you, know, you can actually potentially make higher profits. And that's just because of high market power. They're considered to be powerful if you can make profits, right? So if the difference between the price and the marginal cost is lesser, then your potential profits will be lower. And therefore, you will have lower market power. So it is very easy to see now that just compare price and marginal cost, you will get market power. You can also look at the marginal cost to price ratio to identify whether a firm has got high or low market power. If this thing is increasing to a maximum of one, this means that the market power of this firm is relatively low. Okay, it has a maximum of one because the surviving firm can only charge a price minimum of MC. So MC divided by MC is one. And then again, if this ratio is very, very low to a, to a minimum of zero, then the firm has got very high market power. So you see, it's all about the gap between the price and the marginal cost. Please note that you can also use the price is to marginal cost ratio, okay? If you use P over MC, then your analysis will basically go in the opposite direction. Okay, now let me introduce to you a more formal way of measuring market power, which is called the learner's index. Okay, so the learner index is another way to measure the market power, and it is calculated as such. It's the price minus the marginal cost over price. And this can be summarized as 1 over the price elasticity of demand. Now, I'm sure you'll be asking, how is it that the learner index 
in this formula can be summarized into 1 over the price elasticity of demand. Well, at Quickonomics, we actually believe that learning how to derive formulas will actually help us to understand our models better. So let's take MR equals to MC, and we know this as the profit maximization rule. So we also know that marginal revenue can be calculated with this particular formula over here. So this formula can be expanded into this as what you see here. So I will divide both sides with P, and I will get this. I hope that something seems very familiar to you right now. As you can see, the marginal cost to price ratio is actually incorporated into this formula as you see now. What I will do next is I will bring negative I will bring 1 over to the right hand side and I'll get this formula. Then I'll multiply the 1 by p so that I can get this. And then I multiply the whole equation by negative 1 and I get this. As you can see, this is actually the learner index, and this is why the learner index is actually summarized as 1 over the price elasticity of demand. See, it's quite easy, right? I think after a bit of practice on your end, you should be able to reproduce this by yourself. Now, let's look at what are the implications when there is an increase in the price elasticity or demand, which causes the learner index to fall. Now, a fall in the learner's index is also very similar to the numerator falling. Therefore, we can say that P minus MC might have fallen, which caused the learner index to fall due to the increase in price elasticity or demand. So, as you can see, when the gap between the price and the marginal cost falls, then you know that the market power has decreased. And the intuition behind this is because now, since the price elasticity of demand has increased, that means the consumers are more price sensitive. Okay? And when they are more price sensitive, this just means that you as a firm, you cannot control the price as much as before. So to just give you an example, let's say you want to increase your price to have more profits. You can't really do so because this will cause a very big decrease in the quantity demanded. And you might actually end up having losses instead of profits. So that is the rationale between why when there's an increase in the elasticity, there is a decrease in the market power. So let's bring this analysis to an opposite scenario. Let's say that the price elasticity or demand falls, which causes the learner index to increase. So looking back at the learner, formula, learner index formula, we can see that maybe the numerator increased. Right? This is very similar to the numerator increasing. And since the gap between the price and the marginal cost has increased, we can say that the market power has increased. And the intuition behind this is because now your consumers are more price insensitive. So they are not very sensitive to you changing the price. Therefore, you are able to control the price at a greater extent. So if you're going to increase your price to reap more profits, you don't have to worry about them having such a big change in the quantity demanded because the reduction in the quantity demanded is going to be a very small one. So that is how a fall in the price elasticity of demand actually leads to higher market power because you can further control the price. Now, then, now that we have understood the theory behind the monopolistic competition, I hope that you found it actually pretty simple. Let's talk about the graphical approach to monopolistic competition and how we're going to analyze it using graphs. So, of course, in the beginning, we always have to look at what is the initial equilibrium. So this is what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a downward sloping demand curve as discussed earlier when we talked about the market structure determinants. And then you also need to make sure that the firm is making zero profits in the long run or the initial equilibrium. And to do that, you just need to make sure that the price equals to the average cost at the quantity that is being produced at the equilibrium. So let's take a look at the graph right now as I draw it out. So this is your downward sloping demand curve. And then with a downward sloping demand curve, you will have a marginal revenue curve that looks like this. So I'm going to add in the marginal cost curve now. And using the profit maximization rule of MR equals to MC, I know that the firm will be producing at this point. So from here, I can see that this is the quantity that they'll be producing, XE. And the price is determined using the demand curve at PE. Okay? So now, I need to make sure that the firm has got zero profits. And before that, just to let you know, this is actually dead weight loss. Hopefully from here you can see that the monopolistic competition market structure is not effective. It's not, sorry, it's not an efficient market. Okay? So I know that I need to have my, my average cost here because I want the profit to be zero. And I need to have a minimum average cost that cuts through the marginal cost curve just like this. So with these two points, I can easily draw my average cost curve. Okay? And that is point A, the initial equilibrium for a monopolistic competition. See, it's quite easy, right? So this whole graph here actually represents one monopolistic competitive firm. Actually, the initial equilibrium is very easy to set up. 
So let's talk about the more complicating thing, which is the disturbances that can happen to the monopolistic competitive market. Okay, so let's say there is a change in cost, right? So when there's a change in cost, what will happen is that some of the cost curves are going to shift, and then in the short run, some you know it depends on where the cost curve shifts. You might make maybe positive profits or negative profits. Okay, and that's the end of the short run analysis. Okay, that's it. So now going on to the long run. Uh, it, it really depends on whether you've got positive profits or negative profits, right? So let's talk about positive profits first. What is going to happen when you've got um, positive profits and then you are in the long run? So obviously, firms are going to enter because of the few barriers to entry. So these are going to affect the consumers in a certain way. Firstly, the consumers are going to realize that they are going to have more choices because now they're going to be more firms, right? More firms with more depreciated goods. Therefore, the demand to that one particular margin, uh, monopolistic competition firm will fall. Okay, so for each firm, they will start to realize that the demand to them is going to fall because the customers now have more choices, right? So what that means is that you're going to have a reduction in the price control because of the lesser demand to you. And what this means is that the price sensi sensitivity of the consumers have increased because of more choices that they have. So when they got more choice, you're going to be in a difficult spot because you can't really control your prices. They can just easily go to, their, to, their, to your competitor, right? So the price elasticity or demand is going to become more elastic. Okay, so the conclusion from this is that what you will see is the demand curve is going to shift left because there's lesser demand for you. Okay, and what's going to happen next is that um, the demand curve is also going to become flatter because the price elasticity or demand is more elastic. Now, let's talk about the scenario whereby there is negative profits in the short run. So, in the long run, firms are going to leave the market. And what happens to the consumers? So, obviously, if you understand what, you have, what we said previously, you're going to know that the consumers now will have lesser choices because there are less firms offering differentiated goods. Okay? So, the demand to each firm is going to increase. Right? Lesser firms means you got more of the pie. So, you can actually have more price control now Okay, because your consumers are less sensitive to the price because they don't really have a choice. They don't say they don't really have a choice. They don't have that much of a choice anymore. All right, so your price elasticity becomes more inelastic. Okay, so the conclusion from this is that when there is a negative profits in the short run, in the long run, your demand curve is going to shift to the right and it's also going to become steeper at the same time due to the more inelastic demand. All right. I think that's enough for talking. Let's go to the graphs and see how this works out. So I'm going to set up my initial equilibrium first. Okay, and what I'm going to assume is that there's going to be an increase in the fixed cost. So an increase in the fixed cost will cause your marginal cost curve to shift upwards. So now that there is a new set of cost curves, what you'll notice is that this firm is currently making losses in the short run, right? Because the Average cost is higher than the price when producing X0. So that is the losses that this firm is particularly um, experiencing. So now we're going to talk about this scenario here, all right, where there's negative profits in the short run and how this is going to materialize in the graph. So you know that the demand curve is going to shift to the right and it's going to become steeper. So I'm going to draw that as such. And notice that I'm drawing this demand curve to be tangent to something. Tangent to what? Okay, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be tangent to this point on the average cost curve here. Why? So that I can make sure that the price equals to the average cost, giving me profits of zero. But there's something else that we should ponder about. How do we keep the price level the same as P0? Well, the answer to that is very simple. Just make sure that when you draw the new marginal cost curve, it intersects the marginal cost curve at the same point, okay, which you see over there. So I'm just going to make sure that it cuts through that point, okay, the, the initial profit maxi maximization point, okay, and that's my MR1. Okay? So this is the point where MR equals to MC, and to determine the price level from that, it's actually P1, which is the same as the average cost curve if I were to produce X0. So as you can see, here the firm is making negative, uh, sorry, it's making zero profits. All right. So I'm actually forcing the model to be producing the same quantity because I actually want to do something to my marginal cost to, prof to price ratio. 
I want to keep the marginal cost fixed and the only way to do so is to ensure that the firm is still producing x not amount of x. Okay, so I can basically make a conclusion over here. When there's an increase in fixed cost, there are going to be lesser firms in the long run. Therefore, the remaining firms will actually experience greater market power. Okay, and this is because the gap between the marginal cost and the price is now higher. This gives me a lower marginal cost to price ratio. Okay, now if I'm going to apply the learner's index to this, it is basically the price elasticity or demand decreasing, right? It's becoming more inelastic as we can see from the analysis. So the learner index is going to increase, therefore the market power will increase as well. Okay, so what I've just done here is actually the mathematical approach uh, to monopolistic competition. And the best time to use this is when you realize that you actually have to shift your marginal cost curve and you won't be able to force the model to be producing at the same quantity. So that would be the best way uh, to actually use your mathematical model okay, using the learner's index. Now, for more practice, let's look at a scenario whereby there is a decrease in a fixed cost instead. Okay, so I'm going to set up my initial equilibrium first. Okay, and we're going to assume that the fixed cost is going to decrease, uh, which causes the average cost curve to shift downwards. Okay, the marginal cost curve stays the same. So obviously this firm is making some nice profits, and based on our previous analysis, we know that other firms will enter the market to compete for those profits, right? So what's going to happen is that we have to make sure that this firm now makes zero profits. So the demand curve is going to shift to the left, and it's going to become flatter, alright? It's going to become more elastic. So I'm going to draw this demand curve that is tangent to this point over here. Just to remind you, it is more elastic right now because uh, the consumers have got more choice. So they become more sensitive to your price. So by drawing the demand curve tangent to that point, uh, you have P equals to MC, which makes the profit zero. And again, how do you keep the price level the same? You just have to make MR equals to MC cut at that same point over there. Okay, so that is MR. And the price is determined... Uh, by going up to the new demand curve at P1 and at producing X0, P1 is also the same as average cost so that's why there is zero profits for this firm. So let's make a conclusion over here. When there's a decrease in the fixed cost, there's going to be more firms coming in because of the positive profits. So all the firms, including the new ones, will realize that they have a fall in the market power Okay, because there are more firms um, trying to share the market with you. So obviously you got to share the power, right? you got to share the love. So uh, this is also because your price level is going to fall given the same marginal cost level. So the MC over P ratio increases, which also shows that there is a fall in market power. So looking at the learner's index, an increase in the price elasticity of demand causes the learner index to fall. Okay, And that is a reduction of the market power for each firm. So that again is the mathematical approach to solving monopolistic competition questions. Again, just to remind you, if you encounter a case whereby you need to shift the marginal cost curve and you cannot force the model to stick at producing X0, then you use the mathematical model, the learner index. With that, this is a pretty short video and I want to thank you for starting with Quickinomics.